Okay, continuing with 1-2, uh, reducing fractions. So I look at these and go, okay, they both, uh, 5 will go into both of them. So I'm going to reduce them by 5. I may have to reduce again. I'm not sure. So 15 divided by 5 gives us 3. And then 75 divided by 5 gives us 15. Okay, yes, I did not pick the greatest common factor. I just picked a factor. So I'm just going to reduce again. Divide both sides by 3, or both the top and the bottom by 3. And I end up with 1 fifth. So really, I could have divided the top and the bottom by 15, and then I would have gone straight to 1 fifth. But if we were going to do the prime factorization for these, like the factor tree, if I did the factor tree for 15, I'd end up with 3 times 5. Okay, if I did the factor tree for 75, I would have 3 times 5 times 5. So now, okay, this gives us 1, okay, 5 divided by 5 gives us 1, and so now on the top we have 1, on the bottom 1 times 1 times 5 is 5, so we still ended up with that. All right, right here it's an improper fraction, so for this chapter, Okay, after this chapter, we won't have to. But it says say reduce each fraction to its lowest term. Um, so nothing will go into 25 that goes into 11 because they're both prime. So if we could leave our answer as an improper fraction, we'd just rewrite this. But for this section, we learned, or the section before, or I don't know, earlier in this section, we learned how to changes to an improper uh, mixed numeral because it's improper the numerator is bigger than the denominator 11 goes into 25 two times 2 times 11 is 22 subtract and get 3 so it is 2 and 3 elevenths and you really just have to pay attention to your instructions okay right here I can reduce both the top and the bottom by 11 the top gives us 1, and the bottom will give us 3. And all I did was divide the top by 11 and the bottom by 11. Okay. If you did the prime factorization, 11 is prime, so you just bring that down. 33 is 3 times 11. Well, 11 divided by 11 gives us 1. So we have 1 on the top and 3 on the bottom. I don't care which way you reduce fractions. And but on the ca calculator because we're not you cannot use that on the first test. Okay. Right here. Multiplying fractions. Guys, don't be afraid of multiplying fractions. Everybody sees fractions go, "Oh god, can't do it." Okay? You haven't you've been able to do everything up until this point. Even now, you're going to be able to do this. This is not hard, okay? To multiply, what you do, there's two ways to do this, these problems. You can multiply straight across, then reduce, like this. 3 times 2 is 6, and 7 times 5 is 35. That will not reduce, so we're done, okay? And my pen is running out, so I'm going to have to switch to my red one. Okay, this one right here, this really has a 1 under it. Okay, when you have a whole number, it has a denominator. We just don't write it. It's 1, though. We're going to multiply the numerators. 5 times 7 is 35, and 1 times 12 is 12. Improper fraction, we got to change it to a mixed numeral. 12 goes into 35 two times, we get 24. Subtract and get 11, so we have 2 and 11 twelfths. Okay, right here. Now this problem, I will do this differently than you guys, probably. But this is how you will probably, most likely do it. You'll say 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 4 is 12. 
Now, you can reduce this and then change it to a mixed numeral, or you can do a mixed numeral and then reduce. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Um, if you went ahead and reduced it and said, okay, the biggest number that goes into 18 that goes into 12 is 6, and you'll get 3 over 2, then you'll get 2 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2, so you get 1 and 1 half. Okay. Now how did I do from here to here? I just divided by 6. Now I could have, my, I keep forgetting that purple pen does not work. Let me see if I have another. Uh, I don't like this one as well, but hopefully it will work. Okay. Now you could have from here gone down here and went 12 into 18. It goes one time, you get 12, subtract and get 6, 1 and 6 twelfths, and then reduce the 6 twelfths to 1 half. Okay? Now, any of those ways are fine. Okay? That's not even how I do it. You guys multiply, then reduce. I reduce, then multiply. I look at this problem and go 2 goes into itself one time, into 4 two times. Okay, as long as one's in the top, one's in the bottom, you can do this. 3 goes into itself one time, into 9 three times. 1 times 3 is 3, over here. 1 times 2 is 2, so I can go straight to that and then go there. It doesn't matter. However it is that you learned, stick with it. Right here, we're going to change these to improper first. We're going to say 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11 over 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5 over 4. Now, there's nothing in the bottom that I can cancel in the top, so I have to multiply straight across and get 55. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, you go 12 into 55, it goes 4 times. 4 times 12 is 48. Subtract and get 7. So, you get 4 and 7 twelfths. And 7 twelfths won't reduce. Okay. Moving right along to division. If you can multiply, you can divide. Again, it's not hard because what you're going to do is you never actually divide fractions. You change them into multiplication problems. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring down, you're going to rewrite the first fraction, you're going to change division to multiplication, and then you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 7 fifteenths. The reciprocal just means to flip it. So it'd be 15 over 7. Now, it's just a multiplication problem, just like we did. Again, I would say 3 goes into 15, but you probably will go 2 times 15 is 30, 3 times 7 is 21. Then you do the long division, and you go 21 into 30 one time, with 9 remaining over 21. See, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do this anymore. Okay, but it's fine if you do. Okay, by doing this, it's fine, but by reducing within the problem, 3 goes into itself one time into 15, 5 times, I'm just not working with as big a num as large numbers. Oh crap, <laughs> you know what I did, <laughs> or didn't do, is I did not reduce my 9 over 21. I didn't even look for it. Sorry about that. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 goes into 21 7 times. Now I caught that because I came over here and went, oh, I reduces by 3, both the top and the bottom. So if I had said 3 goes into 15 5 times, I get 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 7 is 7. Now I'm not dealing with this big, long, you know, bigger numbers. And 7 goes into 10 one time with 3 left over, over 7, which is the same thing I got here. Okay. 
right here, I'm going to rewrite the 3 fourths. I'm going to change division to multiplication and I'm going to flip the 5 to 1 over 5 because this really has a denominator, we just don't write it. Now that we have this multiplication problem, all we have to do is multiply. 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 5 is 20, and it will not reduce. Now on C, I am going to suggest that you do not try to do every too much at once because that's when careless mistakes happen. What I would do is I'd change these first before flipping. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3 is 19 over 4 divided by 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2. Now I will rewrite the first fraction of 19 fourths. I'm going to change the division to multiplication and then I'm going to flip the second one to 2 thirds multiplying by its reciprocal. I say flip but it's still meaning the reciprocal. Okay, then 9 times 2 is 38, 19 times 2 is 38, and 4 times 3 is 12. 12 goes into 38 3 times, which gives us 36. We have 2 over 12, so it's 3 and 2 twelfths, but 2 twelfths will reduce to 1 sixth. 3, 2 goes into 2 one time, into 12, 6. Okay. Again, I would have said the 2 and the 4 cancel. And I would have gotten 19 over 6. And then 6 goes into 19 three times. It gives us 18. So I have 1 left over over 6. So I'm just not dealing with these large numbers. Okay, now adding and subtracting with identical denominators. Again, not hard. Okay, we haven't, don't, let's change your mindset for those of you that say, I can't do fractions. Okay, you just weren't ready for it. Okay, you just haven't gotten the grasp yet. But we haven't done anything difficult. Okay. Still, we're not doing anything difficult. When you have the same denominator, you keep the denominator. And all you do is add or subtract your numerator and you're done. 3 plus 4 is 7. And then 7 elevenths will not reduce. So you just keep it. Right here, denominator is 12. 11 minus 5 gives us 6 and that reduces to one half. Right here, um, this one is a little bit harder, okay? And here's why. Um, well, actually, I think the way they teach it now in elementary school is they have you change it to mixed numerals, okay? I didn't learn it that, I mean, an improper fraction. I just use mixed numerals, but then you have to borrow. So here, let's change it. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21 over 4, minus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11 over 4. Now our denominators are the same, so keep it 4 and go 21 minus 11 is 10. And then I just do this, 4 goes into 10 two times, well 2 times 4 is 8, well 2 left over over 4. I just don't have to do this, okay? But you can keep doing this until you get it, 2 and 2 fourths, and then 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. Okay. Now, this is where it gets more challenging, okay? This is the only part that should be challenging for you when it comes to fractions, and that's adding and subtracting fractions when the denominators are not the same. That's the only time that it's difficult, okay? And to be honest, 
we would much rather, we as instructors, would much rather use whole numbers than fractions, but in life we deal with fractions, okay? All right, so here's what we have to do. We're going to have to write, rewrite fractions with equivalent, as equivalent fractions with the least common denominator. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to find a number that 4 and 5 will both go into. Okay, you can always multiply them to get a number. You're just going to have to reduce probably at the end. But some of the times that number gets big. Like right here, you can use 24 because 4 and 6 will both go into it. But there's a smaller number of 12. That's the least common denominator. Okay, so let's first find the least common denominator. Okay, which here would be 20. Now there's a couple ways I find that. I always like to take the biggest number, which is 5, and I list its multiples. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20, until I get to a number that 4 went into. There we go. Okay? That's one way. The other way is do the prime factorization. And I'm going to do that up here between 5 and 4. Well, this one's not a very good one to do a prime factorization because the way you do the factor for 5, you're just going to get 5. For 4, it's 2 times 2. See how they have nothing in common? So what you do is you multiply all your prime factors together and that's going to give us 20. Okay, so now that we found 20, we've got to rewrite our fractions. So I have 1 fifth and I have 3 fourths. I'm just going to rewrite this leaving some room. Okay. Now, what did I multiply by? Eh, I don't like this. Let me do it a different way. Okay, let's rewrite this with our denominator being 20. Let's put both our 20's down there. Okay. So, what did we have to multiply 5 by to get 20? Which was 4. Whatever you do the bottom, you have to do the top. So 1 times 4 is 4. Well, how did I get from 4 to 20? I multiplied it by 5. Well, then you just say 3 times 5, which is 15. Now we have the same denominator of 20. Just add 4 plus 15 is 19 and then always look to see if you can reduce. Now, over here, 4 and 6. We talked about, yes, you can multiply them and get 24. It'll work, okay? It's just that if you, that's just not the smallest one. It's not that big a deal, but 